Welcome everyone. I want to welcome two distinguished guests that we have here. Ofaganizi, who is the founder of iBasis, and Alexander Pebero, who is the founder of the new iBasis. What I really want to start with is what was the experience like studying iBasis? 25 years ago, the internet was just a baby, was just beginning. There were maybe 20 million subscribers in the US using dial-up on AOL. I decided to do VYP even though VYP was non-existent at the time. We decided to raise a little money to buy a couple gateways and to test and see if we can really make technology work. We were out to prove that VOIP could work and could be cheap. So Gordon and I flew over to Japan to some company that we met before and we were going to demonstrate how great VOIP is going to be. And we made an international call over the PSTN from this company in Tokyo back into the basement of my house normal PSTN. Then this gateway was connected to the second gateway with a five foot internet cable. So wow. this was the IP part of the VOIP. And then we called back into the office in Tokyo. So it was the most expensive phone call in the history of phone calls to show how cheap it could be. After the internet uh, was deployed and realizing that voice over IP was not something impossible, but they saw it as a threat, a lethal threat, because voice over IP was voice for free. The voice business was definitely not dead because the mobile in the meantime uh, had come across the whole world and uh, we had the opportunity, I mean not only the whole world, had the opportunity to have mobile all over the place and to be connected. So uh, I tried many, many ways. Uh, to, to consolidate with other telecom players and in the end I saw that the only way uh, to consolidate this industry was to do it independently. In the end it's a consolidation play so I said well I'm just going to wait for the, for the next opportunity. The next opportunity came up, it was iBasis. At some point you know uh, KPN reached the, the, the rapid pace of uh, SFR because SFR uh, was uh, going very uh, rapidly in the uh, selling process and uh, it came together the second week uh, of March 2018, I will always remember. Uh, we signed on Monday uh, KPN, uh, iBasis from KPN, and on Friday we signed SFR that, with yeah. Altis. You know, it's very funny, we should have switched places. They're telling you you're not an entrepreneur, they were telling me you're not a telecom guy, what do you know <laughs> about telecom? So them, I don't know anything about telecom. That's why we can do something new and different, but it's just funny, they always you're not this, you're not that. You know, you are what you want to be, what you make it be. That's yeah. very true. That's, that's very true. iBasis challenges the status quo. I think that's important in our industry. We need in the industry people who think different and those perspectives help us to deal with the future on a global scale. The wholesale carry of the future, uh, the new infrastructure now with modern tools, that's why He's been successful now, he's going to be very successful in the future. When you look at our basis, we've had a DNA of innovation, continues on right now as well. And when you link that with like the milestones that we've had and getting us to where we are right now. It was important to establish the quality of the voice going over our network. And then over time, of course, the internet got better. Uh, we had multiple pipes and we could switch between them. Uh, so, so this was a big deal. I'd say uh, we kind of tame the internet. So we had to work this and convince the carriers it was uh, okay to do this. We also invested a lot of money in business analytics. This, this was early on. Business analytics was not recognized as a big thing. The innovation uh, angle was uh, extremely important. That was very convincing. The 95 patterns on the wall uh, behind us <laughs> are the proof, and we kept that idea, to be innovative because we were, as a consolidator, disruptive again. So that's where really the, the, the two DNAs uh, came together with the IP innovation on IP and innovation in the, in the telecom carrier world. Beautiful.
How do both of you look at independence in terms of how you operate? Whether as a company, whether being a network provider, from a financial point of view? Well, uh, you know, in the independence is great because you have a dream, you have an idea of how to execute the dream and bring it to fruition. And you need independence to be able to execute that dream. Even if many naysayers say it can't be done. For us, it will be also the challenge for the following steps to, to, to go bigger, to indeed always attract people that will contribute to the independence sure. so that they feel that the independence is indeed the fuel of the growth. They have a very pragmatic and also proactive uh, approach in dealing with us. So, you know, whenever there's a problem, they, they contact us proactively, they tell us exactly what they're doing, and then they solve it. The company has a stronger portfolio and also a larger scale. Scale will open up new cross sell access to a larger revenue generation pool. And revenue can then be reinvested in the digital growth lever uh, in line and off delivering this uh, global innovative wholesale offer. So we're in the wholesale space which is when you look at the entire value chain, where we're dependent on what happens in the consumer space. Uh, where do you see over the industry going from a future point of view? Today, there's a lot of energy on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and there are a lot of new applications trying to deploy machine learning. And, and in telecom, of course, there's always room for improving and more services and you know I know you guys are working on all the new stuff that's very exciting Because the fraud is a, is a disease that, uh, as an industry, we need to fight. It's very important that together, as an industry, we are able uh, to fight for that. It's really so fascinating is to see that uh, 25 years later, the internet is a, com a commodity and we develop all our communication. So it's not only the communication that is coming, but it's also the means to develop the countries. And uh, that's how big communication has become uh, over that time, time span. One of the topics right now is diversity and inclusion because it goes to a long way in terms of making your enterprise you know, mm -hmm. the best of breed. We um, deployed equipment in 100 or so countries. We needed 
local people from all the different cultures to work with us to develop the network. So th this was just part of the DNA of the company. We needed that inclusion to be able to do the business. It was a natural thing for us to do. We had people from everywhere. We weren't thinking about we need a certain gender or we need a certain, we just needed to hire the best people we could. And whenever we found them, we hired them. It didn't matter what they were, where they were from. If they were good at what they were doing and we needed that talent, we got it. From the start, you learn that the, the inclusion of all the point of view, all the different life, help you understand the needs of your people in, within your company, the needs of your customers, your partners, and also your partners are critical. And so that's why uh, inclusion, it's not only about, uh, it's not um, a fashion, it's a way of living, it's a way of working, it's a way of participating to the progress of the world. Ibasis was like my baby, right? So it's good to see you moving it forward and keeping the brand and having all the new ideas. So it's great to be here. So to another 25 more years. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, great. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.